cứ 5 người ở Canada thì có một cá nhân gặp vấn đề hoặc bệnh tật về sức khỏe tâm thần. Tự tử là một trong những nguyên nhân gây tử vong hàng đầu ở người Canada. Why people tend to delve into negative emotions? Life is hard. Life is painful. Life is also short. He doesn't see 99 failures. He sees that I've got to talk to 100 to make one. How can I overcome this negative in my life? How can I go for maximum joy? Làm sao để luôn có một tinh thần lạc quan và thái độ sống tích cực? Chào các bạn đến với chương trình Cà phê with Culture phát sóng định kỳ hàng tháng trên kênh YouTube Culture Channel. Thì các bạn Hoàng hôm nay là Hoàng Anh chạy bộ ở công viên Meadowvale Conservation Area thuộc thành phố Mississauga trong đại đô thị Toronto. Một điểm đặc biệt nhất của Canada đó là không gian xanh. Không biết quý vị có biết hay không Canada của chúng ta có 347 triệu hecta đất và chiếm gần 9% tổng diện tích rừng của thế giới. Canada là quốc gia có nhiều rừng thứ ba trên thế giới theo diện tích với gần 10 hecta mỗi một người. Ước tính là có 8.953 cây to cho mỗi một người dân. Rất là nhiều ha. Con số này cho thấy người dân Canada đang được hưởng diện tích rừng trên đầu người nhiều hơn hầu hết các nước khác trên thế giới, gấp hơn 17 lần mức trung bình của thế giới. Hoa năng đứng tại đây vào thời điểm này là thời điểm cuối thu. Như quý vị cũng thấy là cây lá nó cũng rụng hết rồi. Nhiệt độ trung bình mỗi ngày là khoảng 10 độ C và buổi tối thì xuống khoảng 5 độ C hay là thấp hơn một chút. Nhưng mà đặc biệt ngày hôm nay và trong tuần này thời tiết thì ấm áp hơn lên đến 17 độ C. Đặc điểm trong mùa này là ở khu vực GTA thôi là khu vực chúng ta có nhiều gió và nhiều ngày mưa. Hoàng Anh rất thích chạy bộ trong công viên để hít thở không khí trong lành. Chúng ta có thể nạp năng lượng tích cực đúng không? sau những ngày làm việc mệt mỏi, căng thẳng là chạy bộ ở công viên giúp cho chúng ta nạp thêm năng lượng tích cực. Gần đây, báo đài Canada nhắc đến rất nhiều về vấn đề sức khỏe tinh thần. Vấn đề này từ trước đã luôn được các tổ chức, cơ quan và chính phủ Canada quan tâm và chú ý. Tuy nhiên, trong bối cảnh dịch COVID-19, mọi người đều phải hạn chế các giao tiếp xã hội, giữ khoảng cách, thậm chí là có những gia đình có con cái làm việc ở tuyến đầu chống dịch. Con cái cũng hạn chế gặp mặt ông bà, ba mẹ của mình do nguy cơ đối với người cao tuổi cao. Mọi người đều phải hạn chế các cuộc tụ họp xã hội, hay gặp mặt bạn bè cũng phải hạn chế. Vấn đề sức khỏe tinh thần càng được quan tâm nhiều hơn. Báo chí thì đưa tin rất nhiều về những lo ngại của các quan chức chính phủ và giới chuyên gia đối với vấn đề này. Ngày 20 tháng 10, trên tờ National Post có bài viết nói rằng cứ một trong bốn người Canada sẽ nói vấn đề sức khỏe tinh thần của họ trở nên xấu hơn trong thời gian COVID-19. Steve Jordan, giáo sư tâm lý học tại Đại học Toronto cho biết lo lắng là vấn đề sức khỏe tinh thần nổi trội của đại dịch cho đến nay với vô số người lo lắng về sức khỏe và an ninh công việc của họ và sự không chắc chắn khi nào cuộc sống sẽ trở lại bình thường. Tâm trạng lo lắng đôi khi có thể làm suy nhược và có tác động tiêu cực đến hệ thống miễn dịch. Vì vậy, nếu chúng ta đang bước vào mùa đông với ít ánh nắng mặt trời hơn, ít khả năng tương tác xã hội, ít cơ hội hoạt động aerobic, ít đảm bảo việc làm hơn cho một số người, Tôi lo lắng chúng ta có thể thấy tỷ lệ trầm cảm tăng lên, giáo sư cho biết. Trong bất kỳ năm nào, cứ 5 người ở Canada thì có một cá nhân gặp vấn đề hoặc bệnh tật về sức khỏe tâm thần. Ước tính rằng khoảng 10-20% đến thanh niên Canada bị ảnh hưởng bởi bệnh hoặc rối loạn tâm thần. Ngày nay thì khoảng 5% nam thanh niên 
và 12% nữ thanh niên từ 12 đến 19 tuổi đã trải qua giai đoạn trầm cảm nghiêm trọng. Tổng số trẻ từ 12 đến 19 tuổi ở Canada có nguy cơ mắc bệnh trầm cảm là 3,2 triệu người. Bệnh tâm thần đang ngày càng đe dọa cuộc sống của con em chúng ta. Với tỷ lệ tự tử của thanh niên Canada cao thứ ba trong thế giới công nghiệp hóa, tự tử là một trong những nguyên nhân gây tử vong hàng đầu ở người Canada từ 15 đến 24 tuổi, chỉ đứng sau tai nạn. Tại Việt Nam, một khảo sát dịch tễ học gần đây trên mẫu đại diện quốc gia của 10 trong số 63 tỉnh thành cho thấy Mức trung bình các vấn đề sức khỏe tâm thần trẻ em vào khoảng 12%, tương đương hơn 3 triệu trẻ em có nhu cầu về các dịch vụ sức khỏe tâm thần. Trên thế giới, thì theo thống kê của Tổ chức Y tế Thế giới WHO, có hơn 264 triệu người có vấn đề về sức khỏe tinh thần, gần 800.000 người chết do tự tử mỗi năm. Quý vị khán giả có suy nghĩ gì về những thông tin và số liệu ở trên? Khi nói về vấn đề này thì Hoàng Anh nhớ đến một cuốn sách mà Hoàng Anh tâm đắc của một tiến sĩ, bác sĩ tâm lý người Canada, Dr. Daniel Rutley. Cuốn sách này cũng đã được dịch sang tiếng Việt với tự đề là Thoát khỏi bảy cảm xúc. Cá nhân Hoàng Anh đánh giá đây là một cuốn sách rất hay về cảm xúc, thái độ sống, về cách cân bằng và kiểm soát cảm xúc của bản thân để luôn duy trì một cái nhìn tích cực trong cuộc sống. Và Hoàng Anh cũng đồng tình với quan điểm của tác giả cuốn sách này Đó là cảm xúc tiêu cực không lành mạnh kéo dài như trầm cảm, lo âu, tức giận nè Khiến bạn cảm thấy bị mắc kẹt, bế tắc Còn ngược lại các cảm xúc tiêu cực nhưng lành mạnh như buồn bã, ăn năn, quan tâm ghi dấu vào trí nhớ của bạn Để giúp bạn học cách tránh gặp phải những tình huống như vậy trong tương lai tạo ra động lực để tạo sự thay đổi. May mắn là à, tiến sĩ Daniel Radley cũng đang sinh sống tại khu vực GTA, đại đô thị Toronto của chúng ta. Vì vậy, trong chương trình này, Hoàng Anh đã mời ông cùng tham gia để nói về chủ đề này. Làm sao để luôn có một tinh thần lạc quan và thái độ sống tích cực. Bây giờ thì mời quý vị khán giả cùng Hoàng Anh đến phòng khám của Dr. Daniel để chúng ta cùng trò chuyện với ông trong lĩnh vực này nhé. Chúng ta cũng đã tập thể thao xong rồi, bây giờ Hoàng Anh đã chuẩn bị sẵn sàng, chúng ta bắt đầu một ngày mới nha. À, bây giờ chúng ta sẽ đi gặp bác sĩ Daniel Rutley. Nhưng mà trước khi chúng ta đến gặp bác sĩ, mình sẽ ghé ngang Tim Hortons để mình grab một ly cà phê hay một ly trà nha. medium double double của Hoàng từ Tim Hortons. À, đối với các bạn mà không biết nhiều về Canada đó, Tim Hortons là một chuỗi phục vụ cà phê và thức ăn nhanh lớn nhất của Canada. À, và một cái câu rất là thông dụng mà chúng ta hay nghe là medium double double á. Thật ra double double chỉ là hai um, hai đường và hai sữa, chỉ có vậy thôi. Và như đã hứa đó là Hoàng Anh bây giờ dẫn uh, quý vị cùng uh, chúng ta đến uh, gặp bác sĩ Daniel Rutley. Tiến sĩ Daniel Bradley là một nhà tâm lý học. Ông là diễn giả cũng là tác giả. Ông xuất hiện rất là nhiều trên các kênh truyền hình và báo chí khác nhau. Với trên 25 năm kinh nghiệm và thuyết trình và trị liệu tâm lý, đó, ông đã giúp rất là nhiều người tìm lại cuộc sống một cách tích cực hơn. Ông cũng là tác giả của một cuốn sách bán chạy nhất có cái tên là Escaping Emotional Entrapment mà có lẽ quý vị ở Việt Nam cũng biết được về cuốn sách này mà nó được dịch ra có tên là thoát khỏi bảy cảm xúc bây giờ chúng ta đang trên đường đến gặp bác sĩ Daniel Rutley
Thank you for being here with us today. It is my pleasure. So happy to be here. Great. We all want to strive for more in life. So let's start with emotions. How can emotions affect our behavior? Um, if we think about it, we've been an emotional animal for hundreds of thousands of years. And to, so that's what tends to dominate. Uh, we tend to have an emotion and then we act on the emotion. But uh, when proto-languages started to occur about 40,000 years ago, our thinking became more complex. And then what ends up happening is our thinking tends to dominate and then direct how we feel and uh, how we approach problems. And thinking tends to be one of the main drivers of our emotions, moods, and feelings. So what makes people feel down and unconfident? In other words, um, why is it, why people tend to delve into negative emotions? Well, um, again, if we go back historically, deep in our DNA, uh, we are in essence a negative animal because 100,000 years ago, Focusing on negatives and avoiding negatives would have a survival benefit. But um, positives, while there was a somewhat survival benefit of uh, troop or uh, pack animal cohesion, it was really avoiding the saber-toothed cat or avoiding the dangers. And so focusing on negatives had huge survival benefits. So we're actually the descendants, if you think about it, of people who focused on negatives. And so negatives still oh. tend to predominate in our DNA today. Today, given our uh, modern society, our ability to think much better than 100,000 years ago, yes. uh, we, when we bump into problems, if we're not good at thinking them through well, mm our emotions tend to just be rampant. Uh, they tend to come out based on previous experience and upbringing. Mm. But if we slow the movie down a little bit mm -hmm. and say, how am I thinking about this? Mm. What ends up happening is we can learn to manage our thinking. Mm. So as an example, two twins can buy brand new cars. One gets a scratch on it and freaks out. The other one gets a scratch on it, and he sort of shrugs his shoulders and goes, well, that sometimes happens. Mm -hmm. So it's partly your approach to life, and it's not just what happens to you, but it's how you interpret and think about mm -hmm. what happens to you that will largely impact on how you feel about that something. Oh, that's, that's great. Your, our approach, when on our approach to it. Which is under our control, which is our nice. Control, which is, yes. Um, so during the pandemic, there's a, um, a feeling of losing control generally. How does this affect uh, people and how can we turn it around? First off, if we were to look at two basic styles of people, some people are very social, outgoing, gregarious. Others are much quieter. Uh, they would much prefer a backyard barbecue of just two or three people, while others really want to go out and socialize with many people. Right now in the middle of COVID, people who tend to be more solitary seem to be doing better because things haven't actually changed an awful lot for them. But if you like to have lots of family around and socialize with friends and next door neighbors, that's where it becomes more of a problem. And because it goes against that individual's natural tendency to be outgoing and very social. And so it really, in part, depends on the personality, style, or type. So, um, you know, let's, let's talk about your, your best-selling books, The uh, Escaping Emotional Entrapment. Yes. This book actually uh, is well-loved and uh, popular in, in Vietnam. But the, uh, the title caught my attention. Why do you consider 
emotions and trauma? Um, the way I, I sort of refer to it is most of us get upset, angry, insecure. We lack confidence. Um, get anxious, worried, this sort of stuff, because we haven't been taught to manage our emotions better. Mm -hmm. And so we get stuck in them and we're unaware that we can even do something about it. And if you were to ask the average person, how are you going to feel at 3.15 tomorrow afternoon? Mm -hmm. The average person goes, I don't know. I guess if I get fired from my job, I'll be really bummed out. If I win $20 million, I'll be really happy. Uh, so what ends up yeah. happening is we go up or down based on the world and we have very little self-control and that's sort of the entrapment i'm referring to is that we got stuck there we got taught to behave in a certain way and to and we expect our emotions to flow from what happens in the world versus looking at how we approach problems in our lives and think about ourselves, uh, interpersonal relationships, how we think about all those things can have a dramatic impact on the level of distress or joy we might be experiencing on any given day. So one way to escape from emotional entrapment or negative thinking that you mentioned in your book is to love ourselves, right? Yes. Can you share some tips how we can do that? Absolutely. I separate self-ish, which tends to be me, 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 I don't uh, care about you, uh, and selfless, which is self you, 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 and I come last. Neither one of those strategies tend to work out very well. But if we think I come first, and when I'm happy and strong and healthy, I make a better spouse, I make a better parent, I make mm -hmm. a better friend, a better employee, a better citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. So first off, it's important to um, think about how can I be happier? And um, then you, you want to sort of follow that path, always along the lines of encouraging yourself, praising yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about conceit which tends to be, look at how good I am and I'm better than you. Uh, I'm talking about this quiet sense of self-appreciation of what an incredible, wonderful human being you are. And if we were to appreciate ourselves the way we might appreciate a dear friend or a small child, mm. we would do better, but we tend to beat up on ourselves or not. If I ask someone, who's the person who's hardest on you? Somebody else? or yourself, mm -hmm. easily nine out of 10 people will say, I'm harder on me than I am on other people. Mm -hmm. And that's just inappropriate. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be hard on you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because nobody gets up in the morning and says, wow, today I'm really going to mess up my life. It's not the way we approach topics. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to do better. It's just the nature of the human being. And when we do poorly, it's usually because we didn't think something through very well, mm -hmm. we're brand new at it, mm -hmm. or we're upset and distressed. Mm -hmm. And that's when people act out. But if we calm down, slow down the movie of life, mm -hmm. and first start to appreciate what an incredible person we are. Mm -hmm. And that's true for the vast majority of people. If we just appreciate the wonderfulness of who we are, mm -hmm. we'll feel better, be more lighthearted, take problems a little bit less seriously. Less and serious. Through okay. So we should always start with ourselves. If you don't start with yourself, uh, then you're focused externally on other people. Mm. But you know, for most of us, we're going to live less than a hundred years. Yes. And if you don't focus on you, why should anyone else? Uh, if you true. don't care about your own happiness, why should someone else take that into consideration then? Mm. You want to be a role model for how other people are going to treat you. Mm. You treat yourself and show others that you treat yourself wonderfully. Mm. That inspires other people to treat you wonderfully as well. 
always treat yourself wonderfully to be a role model for other people. One, on how to treat you, but also in doing so, you will naturally tend to give other people the benefit of the doubt and then treat them wonderfully. And that's just good social interaction. But it seems life isn't as easy as, you know, doing psychological quizzes right. in magazines. So how can other ways we can make it easier? Um, if somebody's in distress, talk to your spouse, a good friend. Sometimes just getting things off your chest has a certain value and therapeutic aspect to it because we not only connect with other people, which has its own benefits, but we listen to ourselves talk. And sometimes we hear our own craziness and think, oh, geez, you know, I'm sounding crazy. And then we can start to adjust it. If that doesn't help, there are many good self-help books out there. Mm -hmm. But like everything else, read everything critically, skeptically, thoughtfully. And if you're really stuck, there's only one other solution, which is go see a professional. If you've got a, if you've got a toothache, you see a dentist. If you're going to court, you hire a lawyer. If you're in distress, talk to the person who specializes in human behavior and emotion, mm -hmm. and they will help guide you out of that depression or anxiety or uneasiness mm -hmm. or lack of confidence or whatever it may be. Mm. From stress to depression, right? How, how far is it? Um, there are uh, aspects that some people might say are positive stress. And it's usually mm. not the way we think of stress. Mm. Like going to Hawaii tomorrow. Mm. You might be really excited, mm. but you've got so much to do. But we don't usually think of being really excited and you know, packing our bags and whatnot necessarily is stressful, mm -hmm. but it can be tiring and exhausting a little bit, but we have the attitude of excitement mm -hmm. involved in that. So normally we think of stress as a negative kind of stress. Uh, yes. And especially in COVID times, yeah. we're all experiencing at least some of that. Right. We're off balance. Right. And... Um, if we get there and stay there for extended periods of time, it wears down our moods. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be, especially right now, mm -hmm. to be more aware of our moods and start doing things that are going to promote um, good feelings, good behaviors, productive behaviors where we feel good and we're actually creating things. What a great time to learn to play the guitar, as mm -hmm. an example. So be aware of our emotions. Depression, assuming it's not biological, there's biological aspects to depression. Uh, depression is created by one of, or a combination of four basic philosophies or thoughts. And a therapist helps to identify which of those four thoughts an individual has helps them change and adapt or alter those thoughts mm -hmm. so the depression fades away and they're getting back to happiness more quickly. So that leads to, um, to your question, where do feelings of um, anxiety and loneliness come from? Uh, there's sort of two kinds. If I speak to loneliness first, there's two basic approaches to loneliness. Uh, probably the, the single most important is when I'm not feeling connected with myself, when I'm not treating myself wonderfully. Because I think most of us have felt lonely when we're in a crowd. Mm -hmm. And other times we might have been, been uh, alone all week, participating in the hobbies, painting our living room, um, taking the dog for a walk. And we might be all by ourselves and felt very content. Mm -hmm. And so part of loneliness can be... Uh, I'm not feeling connected. I'm not doing things that are rewarding and fulfilling for me. The other aspect of loneliness is sometimes what people are experiencing right now. They're very social. They like to see the smiles on people's faces. <laughs> yes. um, when they go out, they nod, they chat with people at the corner store. Mm -hmm. And if you tend to be more isolated, mm -hmm. 
people can feel that disconnection from other people. And you can Skype, you can text message, you can make telephone calls. Mm. It's not quite the same as in person. Mm. So it's really a secondary approach that can make do in hard times like right now. Mm. But ideally, uh, generally speaking, that sense of loneliness can sometimes also be, I feel disconnected from other people. Nobody understands me. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of two parts to that loneliness mm -hmm. and depression. Um, when we're feeling alone and isolated, mm -hmm. it gets easier to be more self-critical, mm -hmm. to feel more helpless, to feel more hopeless. Mm -hmm. And that will definitely instill a greater sense of depression. Because of the time right now in COVID, more people are just feeling more isolated. And this is a time to really focus on what you can do as opposed to looking at the limitations being imposed upon oh. you by restrictions and shutdowns and lack of you know, um, connection that way. So the rule of thumb, number one, is to be very self-interested. You only have 100 years on this planet, possibly. And so you want to make now as enjoyable and as fulfilling as possible. And that really can be a bit of a struggle. But what are the other options if you don't? And saying it's hard to do that is just really sort of a bit of a self-pity move in the sense that, oh, it's hard to do this. Well, the reality is it doesn't matter if it's hard to change your flat tire. Either you change it or you don't. Either you work at being happier and moving forward and waking up every morning and saying, I'm gonna throw on some nice clothing. I'm gonna go out for a walk. I'm going to pick up my guitar and start playing. I'm going to do my best every single day when that would have been easy possibly for many people without COVID, today this is a skill set we need to develop. It's very important to develop it to maintain good mental health. So um, you mentioned um, some of the ways that we can uh, we will look at the positive side of things, right? To, to survive these um, challenging, I guess, unprecedented challenging right. days. Um, can you mention uh, a few more um, ways for us to boost our emotion, especially as we approach the winter, you know, the first full COVID-19 winter? Right. Um, first off, biology comes first. Mm -hmm. And this is absolutely uh, crucial. We are a biological animal. And so we need... Uh, seven and a half to nine hours sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just no doubt about this. Um, it, when you start to fall be below that quota, we don't remember as well. We're much more forgetful. Our concentration drops. And a lot of these things happen very subtly. So we don't notice a sudden massive drop. But over time, we're less focused. Um, and that usually also poor sleep tends to create an increased tiredness. And when we're tired, we don't deal with our emotions and stressors very well. Mm -hmm. So we tend to be more prone to irritability, anxiety, depression. We don't feel as social, which then tends to translate into more depression. And so we need to take care of sleep. Next is diet. I know this is a struggle for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but this right now in particular becomes mandatorily important to getting good quality food. And with that, whenever possible, get, extra, get some exercise. Get your heart rate up a uh, good 120 beats a minute whenever possible, mm -hmm. five to seven days a week for about 45 minutes a day. And a lot of people say, wow, that's a <laughs> lot of time. Well, that only seems that way today. Mm. Because 150 years ago, that would have been common. Mm. 
because the vast majority has lived on farms. So being active and energetic for much of your day mm. was normal. Mm. It's only now we can sit in the basement with an Xbox mm. or sit on your computer or cell phone. Yeah, so we need to take care of the biology of mm. diet, exercise, mm. sleep. Mm. And when we do those fundamentals, then it gets easier to, to ad adjust to very difficult situations. Mm -hmm. But it's hard if you're eating a lot of crappy foods or not eating well or mm -hmm. excessively, mm -hmm. not sleeping well, um, lack of social uh, inter interplay, which has a huge emotional component. Mm -hmm. um, we are a social pack animal. We don't want to go against that biology, mm -hmm. but yet COVID is thrusting us into a situation mm -hmm. where many people are much more isolated mm -hmm. and that's not a pack animal instinct uh, so we want to adapt and cope with that the best we can mm -hmm. and if we are isolated people who just moved here or gone through a divorce you know a year ago and they or they might have moved from one place to another and they haven't yet developed that friendship those friendships and their family might be in a different country then it's about developing the attitude of during this next year, six months, 18 months, whatever it's going to be, what can I do for me? Learn, grow, develop, uh, dive into that. Because if you think about it, what's the alternative? And be very, very careful with any form of uh, drugs alcohol, marijuana, or any other drugs. It's not that they can't be beneficial for short periods of time in specific situations. What happens is we start to de develop a habit of every night I drink a bottle of wine or I smoke a joint or I do other kinds of drugs. And by the way, that can also be I sit and watch six hours of TV and please get off your cell phone. Uh, it's bad for your brain. It's one thing psychology is freaking out over, my field. Put down the cell phone as often as you can and start becoming involved with your life. It's what we've done for 100,000 years. Mm -hmm. And so put down the phone and start interacting with other people. We're interacting with life itself. We want to develop the lifestyle, the lifestyle. of movement mm. because we're designed to move. Designed to move. Okay, so let's move more. <laughs> exactly. A hundred thousand years ago, there were no old people, right? Uh, when you couldn't run to the tree and climb up fast enough, you were just food. Right. That was it. Mm. And everyone, men and women, could do a pull-up. Because if you, you reach up for the branch, you had to be able to pull yourself up. Mm. Sometimes with a five-year-old child wrapped around your neck mm. to avoid that saber-toothed cat. Oh. And so everybody was strong. Mm. Today, the average person just couldn't do that. Oh. And we've got weaker and weaker. And now most people are dying not of um, infections, Mm -hmm. uh, that used to occur 150 years ago, we're now dying because of lifestyle. Oh. Heart attacks, stroke, mm -hmm. obesity, mm -hmm. diabetes, and the vast majority of that mm -hmm. is our lifestyle our issues. Lifestyle. We're killing ourselves mm -hmm. based on our lifestyle. So why are there people who are unable to face their challenges or their mental uh, health issues to seek help? Well, part of it is um, 150 years ago, again, there were mental health issues for sure, but our worlds were very segmented and uh, you knew you had to plant at a certain time of year and you had to plow your fields. And if you had a migraine, you'd pause, throw up and start plowing the fields again. Go a little longer, throw up and keep plowing. You pushed through difficulty, pain and agony mm -hmm. because it was a life and death matter. If you don't plant now, your whole family starves throughout the winter. So 
our, our uh, routines were very regimented. Men did their thing, women did their thing, and there wasn't a lot of mixing in there. And so the roles were very defined. Not fair, mm -hmm. but defined. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and because life was so cruel, uh, brutal, tough, hard, um, you didn't have a lot of reflection time. And so I'm not suggesting they were happier necessarily back then, but you push through problems. Mm -hmm. Today, people can sit in their basement mm -hmm. and cry and feel sorry for themselves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So developing resiliency, the ability to bounce back, to push through difficulty and problems is something we want to teach our children if children don't learn to work when they're young, they will perceive work for the rest of their lives as hardship. Mm. And never in history have we bumped into that before. Mm. It was just understood. Life is hard. Life mm. is painful. Life is also short. And you are required to make the most of every day. Mm. Today, we can blow off a weekend, we can blow off a whole season, sit mm. in our basement, play Xbox. And these kinds of things don't lend to growth and development. Mm. And so if I could suggest anything to anybody at any time, keep growing, lean forward. Don't try to drive your car forward by looking in the rear view mirror. Look forward and say, how can I solve this problem? What can I do about it? And stop the self-criticism because you're going to make mistakes anyways, but you might as well make productive mistakes from which you can learn from and keep moving forward. And that's probably one of the single best things we could teach our children. Mm -hmm. Never say die. Mm -hmm. And make lots of mistakes. <laughs> to, grow, to grow, right? to grow, right? To grow. The salesperson knows that if I talk to a hundred people, I'll make one sale. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see 99 failures. He sees that I've got to talk to a hundred to make one. So this week he's going to aim to talk to 500 people so he can make five sales. And sort of the same thing with you and I. If we go, I know I'm going to make mistakes in life. Sometimes mm -hmm. little tiny mistakes. I forgot my wallet at home. And then once a year, once every five years, I'm going to make a big mistake. <laughs> and from there, I learn from those mistakes and move forward. Serena Williams didn't get to be one of the best tennis players mm -hmm. by never making mistakes. Mm -hmm. She started off always playing people better than her. Mm -hmm. And by making all of those mistakes and by playing so many people who were better than her, she grew and grew and grew until she became the one that everyone wanted to play. Mm. It's, it's growth through error. And if we stop perceiving mistakes and mess ups and screw ups and all, you know, poor reasoning and uh, problems going on, if we stop seeing them as a ball and chain to drag us down, but something from, uh, to learn from that can actually propel us forward. But it means we need to lean forward. When you go to walk, you have to unbalance yourself. And before you hit the ground, you put out a foot. And you keep leaning forward, and that allows you to walk forward. But if you stand straight up, you can't walk until you lean forward. So it's a good metaphor for life. Keep leaning forward. So for those people who are still unable to, to seek help, um, or, or they, they're not able to face their, their mental issue, how can family and friends help them for those who procrastinate well? It sort of depends on the family. Mm. As a therapist, I've talked to a wide range of people, mm. and some people, their family actually drags them down. Uh -huh. They're always criticizing them. Mm -hmm. And if they turn to their siblings or their parents and say, I'm having a real problem, they go, well, no wonder uh -huh. you're such a screw up. Uh -huh. uh, you know, why didn't you pay more attention? Uh -huh. uh, things like this. Mm -hmm. And they just sort of feel like they get slapped down. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's friends. Mm -hmm. Other people have friends who are, again, less than positive. Mm. And so friends and family can be a huge bonus mm. if they're encouraging, supportive. Mm. 
And one of the most important qualities is listening. Mm -hmm. So if you're in distress, mm -hmm. um, hopefully you'll find people who can listen. But if they don't, you listen to them. Ask questions. Be probing. It turns out that listening is an incredibly difficult skill. Mm -hmm. We want to share who we are with other people. Mm -hmm. In school, they teach us how to do presentations, mm -hmm. how to write exams, mm -hmm. how to convey my knowledge to other people. I don't know of a single course in grade school, high school, or university on listening. No. So listening tends to, really listening. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about sitting there quietly while someone else is talking, while you're talking already in your head. I mean, be fully engaged with what the other person is saying. Mm. Keep your self-talk to a minimum mm. and just be really engaged with the other person. Mm. That's surprisingly difficult. Mm. It's a skill that most of us don't have very well. Mm. And that's a good skill to develop. Mm. And that would be very helpful when, when the other person really yes. in need, right? If you are the person... If you know somebody who's in distress, your child, a spouse, a next door neighbor, a friend, somebody at work, listen. Listening helps you connect and bond with the other person. And when they feel heard, they'll feel like they've made that heart to heart connection. And that all by itself can be a huge mental uh, relief it can be calming all by itself. And if you've ever had that experience where someone just listened as you talked, you'll find that you felt closer to them. And at the end, you just felt calmer and better inside. And it's one of the most important things I think we could do to help other people. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, because they're not good listeners, mm -hmm. they talk to their friends, family, and they don't listen. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they feel even more alone. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes when a good therapist, either face-to-face, -face, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. or through a Zoom call, can mm -hmm. sometimes really help that individual reorganize their thinking mm -hmm. and their approach mm -hmm. to their isolation or mm -hmm. their depression, anxiety, that sort of thing. So we make all our decisions based on emotions, right? Um, it's sort of twofold. Mm -hmm. We like to think we're a logical animal, mm -hmm. and I'm making decisions logically and consciously. Mm -hmm. In reality, most of our decisions are either being influenced or strongly driven by our emotions. Mm -hmm. The person you marry, Mm -hmm. The car you purchase, the mm -hmm. house you buy, mm -hmm. um, the movie you're going to watch tonight is probably based more on emotion than it is logic. Mm -hmm. And if we think about it, how often have we turned to our kids and said something like, like why would you do that? If all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? And clearly the kid is making bad decisions but he's being influenced by peer pressure, his own uh, maybe insecurities or uh, his sense of adventuresomeness, which isn't necessarily well thought out. So our emotions tend to drive our choices in life. Which are you gonna have fish or a hamburger or a steak or a salad for dinner? It's probably less a conscious decision and more one of emotion. What do you feel like eating? What movie do you feel like watching? Mm. And when you go to buy a house, people will go, you know, this house just doesn't feel like me. Mm. And then they don't buy it. Mm. Yet, it might be undervalued. It might be near a school, a hospital. It's a great location. Mm. But if it doesn't feel like your house, mm. you're not buying it. Mm. So feelings drive much of our choices. Mm. So any other advice uh, to become happier and more fun-loving? Um, positive psychology, which is the area aspect of psychology that says how do high-functioning people work? What do they do? Mm -hmm. When I wrote my book, Escaping Emotional Entrapment, mm -hmm. um, 
I had, it was important that I do two things in that book. One was undo the blocks, the negatives. Mm. And so my advice to all of us out there would be, if you've got a block or a negative going on in your life, if it's possible to remove that negative, adapt or change that negative, do so. Sometimes that's just not feasible because the reality is we all have negatives in our lives. We got traffic jams, a flat tire, we get f fired from our job or a uh, house burns down, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the list is endless Endless. of the potential problems. Mm. If you want to be happier, you want to start thinking, how can I overcome this negative in my life? How can I go for maximum joy? I know people who love taking bubble baths and rarely take them. And when they do, they do this really crazy thing. They look at the back of Mr. Bubble and it says, one capful under running water. One capful? Are we crazy? Pour in half the darn bottle. Get the bubbles up to here. Bring in your rubber ducky. Make it fun. Turn on, you know, some music. Uh, bring in a glass of wine. Uh, put on some candles. We so often miss the opportunity to make now better. I want you to make every day. Now, how can I make it better is a question you want to ask yourself. So you're walking down the street, what would a 10 year old do? He wouldn't step on a single crack. He'd pull leaves off of trees or pick up a stick and go bump, 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 bump down a picket fence. He'll walk the curb. Kids make now important because they walk to school and home every day and it gets really boring. So what do they do? They're not thinking about school and the teacher and the exam, they're making now more enjoyable. You're stuck in traffic? Wave at all the good-looking people in the other cars. Do some car dancing. Crank up the tunes. Uh, it's about developing an attitude of how can I make now more enjoyable? So a mundane activity of making meals every day, how can you make that more enjoyable? Crank up the music. Don't be in such a rush. Develop more skills. So at the end of this whole COVID period, mm -hmm. you're actually better off after, after. it than when it started. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Yes. So we're all ready, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Because every aspect of life has challenges. Mm -hmm. It's how you meet that challenge. Mm -hmm. So either are you enjoying the movie you're in, or are you learning from it? Like, why would you turn on the TV? It's either for some version of entertainment, mm -hmm. which might be relaxation, calmness, mm -hmm. fun, play, whatever have you, mm -hmm. or you turn on the TV for maybe a documentary or the news. Mm -hmm. You want to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, your life is a great big three-dimensional movie. Mm -hmm. If you're not having fun mm -hmm. and you're not learning, Oh, you're already in a bad place. Mm. The reason you turn on a, uh, the TV is either for some version of pleasure, fun, enjoyment, mm. or to learn, or both. Mm. And this is your movie. When you come home, are you coming home to a, a love story, a drama, a horror movie, a comedy? Um, this is your life, your movie, you're in it, you're creating this by the choices you make. So if it's not fun or educational, maybe it's time you make some adaptations so you can start having a better movie, so to speak. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel Rutley, for this wonderful, soul-searching, life-changing conversation. We appreciate your advice. It is absolutely my pleasure, anytime. Dr. Daniel Rutley có nhắc đến một đoạn trong cuốn sách của mình thế này. Đối với một số người, cuộc sống dường như là một chuỗi của những phức tạp và đủ vấn đề không bao giờ kết thúc. Đôi khi còn có bi kịch xảy ra. Đó là một cuộc đấu tranh liên tục để duy trì một phần nào đó tích cực. Mỗi ngày dường như chứa đựng vô số điều bực bội, những điều phải lo lắng và một chút lo lắng không biết ngày mai sẽ ra sao. 
Nhưng đối với một số người khác thì dường như thấy hầu hết cuộc sống là một niềm vui Không phải là những người này không có vấn đề Thậm chí họ còn có những vấn đề rất nghiêm trọng ở một thời điểm nào đó Tại sao lại có phản ứng khác với những tình huống rất giống nhau Một số người dường như bơi ngược dòng đời Hoặc ít nhất là vấp phải dòng nước khi dòng chảy kéo họ về phía hạ lưu Những người khác thì bơi theo dòng chảy và làm như vậy Chọn một điểm đến và sau đó đạt được nó với ít nỗ lực hơn những người kia Đức Phật có dạy chúng ta rằng Khổ đau là do thái độ sống và do cách nhìn sai lạc của con người mà có Và một thiền sư thì khuyên chúng ta Thay vì than tôi khổ quá Thì ta hãy nên nói nó bất như ý với tôi quá Đừng để những tư duy khiến bạn đau khổ Và tạo ra những bẫy cảm xúc khiến bạn cứ mãi lẫn quẩn trong đó Chúng ta hãy học cách kiểm soát những cảm xúc và thoát khỏi những chiếc bẫy cảm xúc đó để có một cuộc sống vui tươi và an yên hơn. Hoa Anh nghĩ tới bài học từ loài bướm. Ngày kia, trên một cán nọ xuất hiện một lỗ nhỏ xíu. Một người đàn ông tình cờ đi ngang qua. Ông ta dừng lại và theo dõi rất lâu. Khi thấy có một con bướm đang cố gắng chui ra khỏi lỗ nhỏ xíu đó, sau một thời gian, bướm dường như bỏ cuộc, trong khi cái lỗ kia thì không to hơn được. Người đàn ông thấy vậy, bèn dùng con dao bỏ túi sẽ kén ra để giúp con bướm kia. Bướm đã ra được khỏi kén, nhưng với thân hình teo tóp và cứng đơ, đôi cánh của nó không phát triển và chỉ cựa quậy được đôi chút. Người đàn ông nghĩ rằng, Chẳng bao lâu đôi cánh kia của con bướm sẽ mở ra và sẽ chịu đựng được sức nặng của thân để giúp nó bay cao. Nhưng chuyện đó đã không hề xảy ra. Con bướm không bao giờ có thể bay mà nó chỉ có thể lê lết trên mặt đất với thân hình teo tóp và đôi cánh còi cọc. Bởi lẽ con bướm đã không vượt qua khuôn mẫu mà tạo hóa đã sắp xếp rằng nó phải vượt qua để có thể lớn mạnh và phát triển. Con bướm cần phải tự mình cố gắng phá vỡ và thoát khỏi cái kén thì đôi cánh kia của nó mới có thể phát triển và giúp nó bay cao bay xa được Con người chúng ta cũng vậy chúng ta cần phải cố gắng đối mặt và tự vượt qua những trở ngại trong cuộc sống của chúng ta để có thể phát triển Hãy nghĩ rằng chính những khó khăn trở ngại mà cuộc đời này mang đến cho chúng ta sẽ là những bài học những cơ hội để ta trưởng thành mạnh mẽ hơn nếu chúng ta vượt qua được Như Hoàng Anh đã từng nghe được ở đâu đó Ta xin sức mạnh và đời cho ta gặp khó khăn để được mạnh mẽ Ta xin khôn ngoan và đời cho ta những vấn đề để giải quyết Ta xin tiền của và đời cho ta khối ốc và bắp thịt để làm việc Ta xin được bay và đời cho ta những trở ngại phải vượt qua Ta xin tình yêu và đời gửi đến những người gặp khó khăn cần phải giúp Ta xin ân huệ và đời cho ta tiềm năng Ta không nhận được những gì ta xin Nhưng ta nhận được những gì ta cần Vì vậy chúng ta hãy sống không sợ hãi Dũng cảm đương đầu với mọi trở ngại Và tin là bản thân mình sẽ có thể vượt qua Và rồi mọi thứ sẽ tốt đẹp hơn, tươi sáng hơn Đến đây thì chương trình Cà phê với Culture kỳ này xin được dừng tại đây. Cảm ơn quý vị khán giả đã quan tâm theo dõi và ủng hộ cho chương trình và ekip thực hiện. Rất mong rằng chương trình sẽ tiếp tục được nhận sự ủng hộ và ý kiến đóng góp của quý khán giả. Quý vị nhớ bấm nút subscribe và nút chuông kế bên để được cập nhật những tập mới của chương trình cũng như các chương trình khác của kênh Culture Channel nhé. Xin chân thành cảm ơn và thân ái chào tạm biệt các bạn.